Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 14th of December with me, Patrick Munley. FX markets will likely start the week focusing on Brexit news and also whether there's been any progress on the US stimulus bill, perhaps as well as concerns over a government shutdown. With the US struggling with the pandemic. However, one assumes that Congress would want to avoid a shutdown at all costs. As the week progresses, focus will shift to Wednesday's FOMC meeting. Economists expect a dovish message to be maintained, as well as perhaps some forward guidance on the Fed's asset purchases. The Fed is an experienced communicator, and I doubt it will make any mistakes over misconstrued words on premature removal of stimulus. US data set sees November industrial production and retail sales, as well as the weekly focus, uh, rising focus really on initial jobless claims. All should point to the need for continued loose monetary and fiscal policy. Despite the risks to the consensus view of a weaker dollar, I don't see really uh, this underlying trend dramatically changing anytime soon. And indeed, it could extend uh, if there is ultimately to be any breakdown in negotiations around uh, the stimulus package. Also, look out for Chinese November industrial production figures on Tuesday. Chinese demand has been driving the commodity FX block stronger and adding to the pressure on the dollar. And from a technical perspective, dollar index is continuing to sit just on this uh, descending trendline support at the 1950 level. Got a bit of a bullish uh, reversal uh, late Friday, on, really on some profit taking. And whilst any uh, upside attempts are capped at the uh, prior lows around this 9160, I'm looking for a full test of the 90 level, which is, uh, which is an interim downside target. Once we test that 90 level, we could then see a three-way corrective pattern. But ultimately now, whilst we hold uh, the pivot at 94.75, the downside objective, is the 87 level as discussed in this week's live market analysis session that you can access a recording of through the Tickmill blog. Uh, in the Eurozone, um, away from fiscal and monetary decisions and the Brexit deliberations in Brussels, the Eurozone calendar is relatively light this week. We'll see October industrial production on Monday and the first look at December PMIs for the Eurozone, Germany and France on Wednesday. Lockdowns have taken their toll on the service sector and from the looks of it, consensus expects little rebound here, especially with Germany just announcing today on Sunday with uh, a full national lockdown to combat rising cases in the uh, European largest economy. EU leaders have approved the 2021-27 budget and recovery fund. And with the ECB having passed, uh, the euro dollar should stay somewhat supported. That said, the ECB will occasionally remark that it is watching FX markets very carefully or is very vigilant on FX. But I doubt these remarks will uh, put too much of a lid on the euro dollar in the short term. So from a technical perspective, whilst we hold uh, this 120 support area on any, any corrective pullbacks, I'm looking now for a test of 123, which... Uh, is the major projected ascending trendline resistance and coincides with the 161 extension of the uh, wave four corrected phase that we've just uh, come out of. So I'm looking at any test into this 123 area, bullish, uh, bearish reversal pattern, sorry, set short positions, looking for a move back down to 120 and 119 potentially. Also note we've got some uh, pretty decent divergence, momentum divergence developing as well. Uh, Boris Johnson and Ursula von der Leyen have decided to extend negotiations beyond uh, today, Sunday's deadline, in line with the recent trend of breaking yet another deadline. But the deal should eventually be reached with a possible compromise on the level playing field and agreeing on the so-called ratchet clause where both sides mutually agree to raise standards. Obviously, risk to sterling is pretty much asymmetric uh, with sterling reaction function to the EU-UK uh, trade negotiation outcome. Modest upside in the case of a deal, but profound downside in the event of a no deal as fairly limited risk premium is currently priced into sterling. This is evident in short-term financial fair value models as well as in speculative positioning. On the data front, the BOE meets on Thursday, but as the outcome of the Brexit negotiations 
may, but may not be known, the central bank should keep its policy stance unchanged. Moreover, with the bank already extending its QE programme, there's no urgency to do more unless the Brexit negotiations really do turn sour and the UK heads for the no deal. But overall, um, the likelihood of a deal seems, uh, seems more probable now. Uh, once, if reached, uh, this should provide some upside to sterling. So on Friday, obviously, the mood music was pretty sour. Uh, with respect to uh, both parties to the negotiations. And we did see a pullback in Sterling, but we traded into that support zone of the 131.50. And, um, and we did see some profit taking late in the day. And I would imagine now <coughs> with the negotiations extended that Sterling should, uh, should see a bit of a pop here at the open on Sunday. And whilst we hold this support area at the 131.30s, then I look for a move back through the uh, price cycle highs at 35 for an initial test of this uh, 136, 136, 60 area. Then we'll probably get a bit of profit taking pullback again there. And again, this is all based dependent upon the negotiations. But ultimately, if we do get a deal, I'm looking for a move up to test the 139 uh, projected equality target uh, from the wave four low versus the wave one uh, of the cycle. If we do, obviously, if uh, if talks do go sideways and uh, we do break down, then I'd look for a move through 130, and we could very quickly be back testing the 126 support area. That's not the the baseline case for me at the moment. I'm looking for uh, for upside. Uh, dollar yen has dipped into narrow ranges and didn't get a lift this week since US yields were well contained. Clearly the Fed will generate some volatility here this week and any Fed missteps could see US yields and the dollar yen both press to the upside but the baseline view would see US 10-year yields stay sub 1% in the week ahead limiting the uh, dollar yen upside. Local Japanese interest this week comes in the form of the fourth quarter Tankan business survey expected to recover from recent very low levels and then Friday's BOJ meeting. Here the focus will be on the BOJ extending schemes to keep corporate credit costs low at a time when Japan is still battling with COVID-19. No change is expected in any of the key BOJ levers on rates or JJB yields. And so from a technical perspective, whilst we hold below the 105 level, I'm looking for the dollar yen to break down to retest projected ascending trend line support 103.40 to the 103.20 area. Through there, I think we get a test of year-to-date lows. And at this stage, really, I need to see a close above 105.66 to get constructive uh, on the dollar yen. And whilst we hold below there, I believe we'll get a test of the psychological 100 level. Aussie has moved above, or did move, sorry, briefly above the 75 mark this week, thanks to a combination of Brazilian risk appetite, rallying iron ore prices, and a generalised, obviously, US dollar weaker environment. Looking at the coming weeks, such a combination of external factors may continue to offer support to the Aussie, despite the risk of a temporary correction in risk assets worldwide. Looking beyond the short term, I think the push from iron ore rallies may run out of steam in the new year on the back of supply normalisation and shrinking demand from China. Meanwhile, Beijing has continued to escalate the trade spat with Canberra by hitting Australian wine with more duties. For now, the Aussie remains unreactive to the whole story. And this may continue to be the case unless China really steps up the threats to hit iron ore which is obviously Australia's main export. On the domestic data front, November employment data will be watched in Australia, along with the RBA minutes from the December meeting. On the first one, uh, economists expect only a marginal uptick in the unemployment to 7.1% as hiring might have slowed to around 50K in November. I don't see such levels of unemployment having clear implications for the Reserve Bank of Australia monetary policy. And I remain of the view, really, that the easing cycle has probably peaked. Uh, the December RBA minutes may go down as a non-event, considering the meeting was quite uneventful in itself. As usual, the Aussie may be quite reactive to any currency-related comments in the minutes, but so far the RBA have held a fairly relaxed stance towards the Aussie strength. So, um, as discussed in the weekly market analysis session, uh, saw the a test of the 75-60 area. We saw some profit taking. Whilst we hold the uh, ascending trend line support, which now comes in around 74.40, 
uh, once we hold above there, I'm looking for a test of the wave fiber quality objective at the 77 handle. From there, we could then see uh, some more meaningful profit taking, but uh, I would only expect to move back in to test the 72 area support. So, uh, in immediate in, in the near term, look for any pullback into the 7440 uh, bullish reversal patterns set long positions targeting the 77 level. As always, traders, sure to join me for the last of the uh, weekly market analysis sessions for 2020 on Thursday at 1 p.m. UK time. And as always, I wish you a prosperous week. Thanks very much.